Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to BTM, to the Basketball Time Machine, the podcast with former NBA players about former NBA players. If you want to hear more podcasts like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you always get notified once we upload a new podcast. So let's get going with today's show. Today's guest played in the NBA from 2007 until 2010. Chris Richard, welcome to the show, my friend. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Sean. I'm, I'm, I appreciate you. Chris, first things first, are you still hooping once the time allows it? I play occasionally, uh, sometimes with some of the younger guys and some of the college students here in town just to kind of help tune them up and work on some of my competitive energy. So. All right, but how's your body aching? How do you feel after playing? Actually, I actually, I don't really ache at all because uh, I work out a lot, you know, so I've been taking care of my body a lot. I eat better. I, I actually feel like I'm in better shape now Sounds that I good. don't play than I was uh, <laughs> in my heyday. Wow, <laughs> not bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were younger, who was your idol? Any special player? When I was a kid, uh, I love Tracy McGrady. Tracy nice. McGrady is actually uh, from my area where I'm from. Yeah. I, I don't play his position, but... I still love, I was a power forward center, so I used to wear my arm sleeve up on my elbow, shooting free throws nice. back from the free throw line and all that stuff. He was, <laughs> he was a great player to watch. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's get into your NBA basketball career. You were drafted in 2007 by the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, take me through that feeling and the thought process when you heard your name being called. It was actually exciting, and it was a nerve-wracking at the same time because uh the situation that I was in I wasn't really high on the on the draft boards coming out of college and I, I kind of grinded and fought my way through so I wasn't expected to I, I didn't know where I would go I was hoping I did I did a good job at all of the tryouts and all of the camps and all that stuff but I, I just wasn't sure but uh when they finally did call my name I I cried man <laughs> I cried I wow. cried a little bit of my family we had a little get together and um it was nice man I had a lot of support and People that I love was that with me, and, and we celebrated. Do you remember who the first person was you called on that day? The first person that I called was, I think it was one of my teammates, uh, Joe King Noah. I think it was. Uh, we had it was five of us who got drafted. It was Al Horford, Joe King, Torian Green, Corey Brewer, and myself. So we were all really close knit. So. We, we stayed in contact with each other throughout that whole process. So the Minnesota Timberwolves were in the we were, yeah, right in the middle of the rebuilding process. Um, you had guys like Antoine Walker, Theo Redcliffe, Al Jefferson, right. and those guys. Um, yeah, who of the guys helped you the most? Out of all of the guys, I think it might have been um, between Al Jefferson. It was a few guys. They, they, they did a good job of taking me under their wings. Um, Al Jefferson, Richard McCants, and Craig Smith. They all did. Uh, Craig used to forced me to stay out to practice it and, 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 and make me realize how important it was to do the extra work and just took the time to show me some extra stuff here and now as far as offensively. And Rashard did a great job of helping me with my confidence. You know, uh, we'll get ready to go out for dinner once we get in and land to play. And uh, we'll go out to dinner. He'll just talk to me, encourage me, and just teach me some things. Just It, it, it helped me tremendously. All right. So do you remember any of your teammates who was way better than you thought at first? Honestly, everybody was. Coming out of college, I was kind of arrogant, man. I thought that I was pretty good. We had just came off winning two national championships. Um, I played against who I thought were some of the better players in the, in the, in the country. But uh, it's different watching on TV than actually going against those guys. It's a much, much faster pace than people realize. Guys are way bigger, way stronger, way more athletic, and everybody can play. You know, So a lot of guys, a lot of people in general feel like the bench guys are the so, quote unquote scrub guys are, are garbage, but these guys are one of the best players in the world. So for me, it was a eye opener going against guys like uh, Mark Madsen and, and, and the Calvin Booth, so just guys who I thought I just I destroy them because you know I only see what I see on TV. But it was nothing like that. Mike Doliak used to school me all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> yeah, but but it's true. Many fans don't realize that every player on an NBA team is one of the best players in the world. Even if he's a bench guy, he's one of the best there is. Right, right. And it, and it shows, um, I think, sometimes because everybody is so good, when when the average fan or the average person watches a game, it seems really slow. But nobody, I don't think anybody really realizes the 24-second shot clock and the 8-second uh, half-court second shot. I mean, half-court <laughs> clock. So... That's totally different ball game coming from college and high school where there is no clock or it's 30 seconds. So 
it's a much, much faster game. The executive of that team, of your team, was Kevin McHale. How was it playing for such a true NBA legend? You know, that was kind of surreal for me coming into the organization because uh, I actually got a chance to sit down with him and talk to him once they did a little recruiting process when I went in for my uh, for camp before I got drafted. And uh, he, he was another guy who pulled me to the side a lot and showed me a lot of things as far as post-work and footwork. And for me, I didn't really realize how precious that was until now that I'm not playing anymore and, 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 and just to be around guys like Kevin McHale and even, even, um, Randy Witten, he, he went to the, to the, to the Wizards and, and did a tremendous job. It's just those guys, uh, to me, you know, I was with them every day. So I was, I, I understood that they were legends, but uh, he was a legend, but I didn't appreciate it or really, really understand until I stopped playing and kept mm -hmm. following them. Mm -hmm. Your team at the time had plenty of bigs. I mean, you already mentioned Duliak, but you also had like Theo Redcliffe, Al Jefferson, and those guys. How difficult was it for you to get any minutes? It was difficult, but at the same time, I think it was it was it was cool for me because I've always had to compete for any time, and I got once I got to college, so I was used to it. Uh, it was just different than that in the NBA. Guys are getting paid to play, so it don't matter how well they play in practice or, or if they go in a slump, anything like that. Guys are getting. 15, 20 million dollars a year. He he has to play and he has to get through his tough times. So that was tough. But I think um, what, what what kept me going is the guys kept me encouraged. And even though, you know, sometimes I wasn't playing, I still started a few games and I still had a few breakout games. It's just that I stayed ready and stayed prepared and just played as hard as I could every day while in practice. Do you still remember your first NBA game? My first NBA game, yes. I want to say it was against... The Indiana Pacers, was it the Pacers or the Bucks? I can't remember. Oh, come on, man. You got to be kidding me. You got to know that. <laughs> I can't remember. I was so ready to play and, 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 and in the moment. And it's surreal, like, coming into the game and the lights. And those arenas are so – it's different. It's just a different atmosphere, and it's, it's, it's different. You know what I mean? So, to me, I was so locked in and wanted to play so bad. I was into the scouting report and just wanted to be perfect so I could – get on the court so a lot of the extra stuff that I should have probably noticed went right over my head <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right so so you mentioned that Tracy McGrady was your idol when you were a kid did you play against some of your former heroes or people you really looked up to I played against a lot of players I, Kevin Garnett was a, a, a another one of my favorite players uh growing up uh it was interesting though that He got traded the very year that I got drafted to the Timberwolves, and I was so excited. That that was like a dream come true to me. But once I got to the NBA, I found out that it's not always good to to meet some of the stars and some of the people who you idol because, you know, at that point, you might not like them as much. So that might be a good thing. I still have a lot of respect for him. I don't really know him, so still one of my favorite mm -hmm. players. All right. <laughs> Do you play against T-Mac? Did I play? I played against T-Mac a few times. Yes, I did. He's older than me. He uh, was with the Rockets. And uh, I think it was only with the Rockets. But yeah, I mean. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about prime Tracy McGrady. Yeah, it was prime McGrady. Yeah, man, was that guy was awesome. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. There were some people who were actually doubting that he should be in the Hall of Fame. And I was like, man, you guys must be joking. Tracy McGrady was one of the best offensive players ever. Even Kobe Bryant said that, yeah, that, that T-Mac was the toughest he ever had. That's crazy. Right. I was getting ready to say the same exact thing. And whenever you have a guy like Kobe Bryant saying that this guy is just as good as me or not better than me some nights in, You, you have to respect it, and, and they still show, or I still go back and I watch some of those highlights from the McGrady and Kobe matchups. It, it, it was crazy games. And, you know, I live in Lakeland, uh, about 20, 30 minutes from Orlando, so I got to watch all mm -hmm. of Tracy McGrady's games. So oh, great. That was wonderful. Is there any player you really didn't want to play against, like your personal nemesis, a guy you wanted to avoid? I did avoid? not want to play against. Yes. Like, I heard... Carl Malone's name on the show. I heard uh, actually plenty of players didn't want to play against Shaq. What about you? <laughs> Come on, man, tell me. You know me. I'm 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 different. Like Shaq for me, maybe because he was on the on on the tail end once I started getting going. Um, it was actually surprising to me though when I first played against Shaq uh, against the Sun. He was in we was in Phoenix at the time, and I walked up or to get ready to warm up. And he, he yelled out my name in, in my city. And I was like, wait a second. I thought it was uh, Amari Stardomite because he and I played on the same travel team. But it was Shaq. And I'm turning around like, well, 
how does he know who I am? And how does he know what city I'm from? And, you know, it was kind of surreal at, at, at that moment. But to play against these guys, to me, I always feel like I can play and, and, and mm-hmm. I'm a good player. So I always want to play against the best guys, the gritty guys, the dirty guys, just to see why I match up. You know, so I'm, I, I love challenges and I love to compete. If you could choose, would you rather play in today's game or would you rather go back in time and play, for example, in the 90s? I think the 90s. My style of play, the way that I play, matches a lot more with the 90s. Um, at that time, like I'm, I, I think I was pretty athletic and, and it was strong. I was undersized, but at the same time, that style of play, the big man was incorporated a lot more. Now, it's more of stretch fours and not too many more centers like that. So it's it's different and, and it's not, I can adapt to the game, but I would much prefer the, uh, the older times. Good answer. Good answer, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't remember your first NBA game, but do you remember your best NBA game? My best NBA game? Uh, actually, I think it might've been when I played against the Timberwolves. I, uh, Ooh, yes. I, sweet, Chicago, sweet revenge. I think I had like, Yeah, it was. Uh, like I said, I, li- I like to. Sorry about that. I like to compete. So going out and playing against some of my former teammates and former team, I just felt like I had a lot to prove. And we competed all the time. And and, and uh, Coach Vinny Vinny Del Negro really, for whatever reason, let me play a lot that game. And I took advantage. I think I might have had, like I said, 17, 18 points. Um, Think I'm dunking on guys and doing all type of stuff, and they yelling at me, "Man, you you you're not even that good. Where'd you get all of this stuff from?" My former teammate. <laughs> it was it was it was a lot of fun. Man. Yeah, it sounds like it fun, man. Fun. Um, so you already mentioned that you played for the Chicago Bulls in 2009. So how was that experience playing? Yeah, for Jordan Town, for lack of a better word. That was totally totally different. Going from Minnesota to to playing for the Chicago Bulls, it was. I went from playing on. The uh, NBA team that was pretty good in in the sense of you know being the NBA team, if that makes sense. But then at the same time, once I went to Chicago, it's like I didn't even play or have to be on any commercials. It's just that that brand, the name of Chicago and Michael Jordan. It's, it's a world nine worldwide organization, worldwide brand. So a lot of things started to pick up for me personally, and as far as recognition and, and playing time and just certain things like that for me. So. It was different, and then playing against with a, a, a playing with a guy like D Rose and um, one of my former college teammates, Joakim Noah. But at the time, both of those guys were, uh, I think, one was the defensive MVP, the other one was uh, MVP of the league, and all of that stuff. So I had never been around that type of star power and that type of environment as far as when we go on the road and every game is a sellout and we go to other cities and there's more Bulls fans and other teams. That was that was new for me. So. It was, It was, it, it was different. It was nice. We mm. actually got to go to the playoff. Oh, not so bad, was, man. Pretty... Not bad. So did you meet any of the yeah, true Chicago Bulls heroes like Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, or one of these I guys? Did. I actually met all of them. I can't say that I have a personal relationship with any of them, but I did. Uh, I met a lot of them. Uh, uh, Armstrong come, BJ Armstrong used to come down to the, to the uh, arena all the time. And he, I think he was working with Derrick Rose and Scottie Pippen at the time was coming back down all the time. And we had uh, Randy Brown and Pete Myers, two of the guys who also had a few teams that were on the team. So it was nice. It was cool to just learn from those guys and just to listen to some of the experiences and some of the day. I mean, you know, the, 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 mm. the great times that they had when they played. All right. So if you could go back in time, what player would be the guy you really want to play against. If I can go back in time? Yes. I think I want to see what it's like to play against Kareem. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why does every big just want to play against Kareem, man? It's greatest, crazy. Big, if not greatest player of all time. Uh-huh. I mean, he 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 invented the skyhook. He, he he did a lot for the game and for the for, for the big man in general. So he is like the, the, the pioneer of the game to – if any true big man who, who knows the history of the game. If not him, uh, I don't know who else. Chocolate Thunder, maybe. Oh, uh, Daryl Dawkins is great. But what about Hakeem <laughs> Olajuwon, man? Hakeem the Dream. Uh, oh, man, I, I, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> 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 I keep going on, keep on another level. I definitely would love to play against him just yeah. to try to steal some of his moves. He, he, he played like a 
a point guard from yes. a, 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 a three guard from from the post. Yeah, so it, 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 even to see how guys like Kobe Bryant and some of the better guards go back to to learn his moves. He's even right. He didn't play on the wing, so yes, yeah, Hakeem. Yeah, I, I forgot about Hakeem, but first. I want to see uh, if I can stop that sky hook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Seriously, it's unbelievable. I had a couple of bigs on the show already, and every big just wants to see if they can block the sky hook. Man, it's crazy. That's what it is. I mean, you see it on TV, and I think we, we may discredit him or, or be a little dismissive because so I'm, I'm kind of you know, a lot younger than they are, so I feel like, well, I was, I'm more athletic. I can I can jump. They, the game was a lot slower, and they wasn't doing this, but of course I'm wrong, but still, I just want to see if I can do it, get a steal, and throw a couple of elbows and all that stuff. All right, man. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> so NBA career is over for some time now, so what are you doing today? Yes, it's over. Now I, I do a lot of training. I work with a lot of uh, athletes, basketball players, uh, with, with skill development stuff. I got players that is off in college. Uh, I've been working with a guy, Tony Bradley, that I got a chance to coach and, and train uh, here in my area. He's playing for the Utah Jazz now. Um, a few other players, not as on the biggest level of him, but just a lot of mm -hmm. uh, skill development stuff and strength and conditioning and speed and agility stuff mm -hmm. with different athletes here locally. Okay, so in case a player wants to get in touch with you, how can they do that? They can get in touch with me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is the Chris Richard, and that's it. T H E C H R I S R I C H A R D. All right, players, you heard it here. So now we're getting to my final question, actually the favorite part of the show, um, and actually the part where most players really have a hard time. I want to know your top five ever, so all time, but I want to point guard, a shooting guard, a small forward, a power forward, and a big. And your sixth man can be any position, so it's up to you. So who's going to be? Okay. So I already said Kareem. Mm-hmm. He'll be my... Oh, man, this is tough. We'll say Kareem. <laughs> I have to go with MJ. All right, you're allowed to stay on the show. I will say Magic. Good. Uh, Let's see. Need a small forward too. Oh man, this is a good question. <laughs> Not I'll easy. Throw in Charles Barkley. Ooh, nice, nice. Charles, and, uh, Charles was the man. I need a... Yeah, you're still missing a small oh, forward and, and a sixth right. man. Okay, let's go with Tracy McGrady. No, oh. no, 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 Tracy McGrady. Yep. Okay, your uh, sixth man. Yeah. Okay. Six man. Yep. And uh, still missing a small three. forward. Oh, that's a good question. I think I'm gonna switch it up and go with the truth. Paul Pierce. Wow. Paul Pierce in your all-time top five? Okay, that is unexpected. Yeah, well, uh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, I, I misunderstood. I thought he was one of the guys that uh, all right. I misunderstood my top <laughs> no five problem. ever. From what about Brief. Larry Bird, man? Yeah, it has to be Larry Bird. That's a no-brainer. <laughs> in, my mind, in my mind, I'm thinking about what, which five would compete against any five. And, like, so I misunderstood. But yeah, Larry Bird, that's a no-brainer. All right, Larry Legend in the house. I'm a little bit relieved now. I mean, don't get me wrong, Paul Pierce was a great player, but Larry is a different animal. Actually, your top five is almost quite the same as mine. I only got Hakeem Olajuwon on my big spot just because I'm a big Hakeem fan. Nice, you know your stuff. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, it was great having you on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. And you guys, make sure you follow Chris on his Instagram account if you want to get in touch and want to get some good workouts. Chris is the guy to contact, and I'll see you next time.